Software-defined vehicle is a vehicle whose features and functions are primarily enabled through software. Now, this probably still leaves quite a bit of ambiguity. So one of the best ways to explain software-defined vehicles is by giving you what I believe is a really good analogy at the expense of dating myself. Now, do you remember how cell phones were, say, back in the 1990s? Yeah, 1990s. So um, you could just, uh, you know, make phone calls and you could even uh, do it while you were driving, which was fun. Anyways, uh, cell phones started to evolve and the next thing you know, cameras were added. Then you were able to access the Internet and read your emails. But it was slow, cumbersome, and for some Folks like me, my cell phone would actually get really hot, overheated, uh, because the hardware was uh, overtaxed. But then cell phones got smart, really smart. Today I use uh, my cell phone for video conferencing. Um, I have an awesome camera. I can text. I can play video games. Uh, it helps me navigate to places. I use it to fact check and provide answers. Do my banking and listen to music. And actually, the list just keeps going. Now, what happened then at that time, or the recipe that came together, uh, was the evolution of the microprocessor, the 3G network. And I would argue that Apple was part of that recipe to help evolve cell phones to where the hardware platform and the software were somewhat decoupled. What happened was to say a service-oriented architecture and new operating environment was established. And this has been further refined to where you can break down these large-scale applications into smaller, more flexible software components referred to as microservices. Now, this evolution very much parallels what is happening in the automotive industry. The automotive industry has been moving into a service-oriented operating environment. The technology is there. We have powerful microprocessors, 5G network, and Tesla has been part of that recipe. Also, the business of microservices is well understood and used by various industries like telecom, of course, and even video gaming. Uh, you know, my son has several gaming subscriptions. He purchases skins, weaponry, and other applications that allow him to be somewhat unique and give him um, advantages. Now, today, some car manufacturers have already deployed this type of operating environment. They actually offer subscriptions to enable certain features uh, in your cars. For example, face recognition, so only certain drivers can drive the vehicle, and other subscriptions to unlock everything from entertainment options to enhanced navigation and hands-free driving. Now, let's talk a little bit about how we actually got here. Just like cameras and internet access were added to cell phones, advanced driver assistance systems like lane assist, emergency braking, active suspension, radar cruise control, and other stuff has been gradually uh, added to cars. Also, sensors and artificial intelligence for autonomous driving and other technology like over-the-air data transfer. In fact, quite a bit of telematics data collection occurs. Data from vehicles' performance, fuel consumption, speed, GPS, error faults, which are used to diagnose issues and help you with maintenance. Even the driver's driving behavior patterns can be tracked. You know, Tesla developed the Model S over a decade ago, and as a startup, they took the opportunity to design an electronic architecture with fewer ECUs, but with more scalable functionality and the capabilities to distribute these capabilities over the air. This actually marked the beginning for the software-defined vehicles, where you have a base level of hardware, which is built into every vehicle, and the selective functions are defined by the software. This is actually very beneficial to the automakers uh, because they can build one trim, one hardware architecture that supports all of these capabilities, and there's also room to scale. This uh, drastically simplifies and reduces the cost of manufacturing the vehicle. Also, at the dealership, you can then purchase the features or subscribe to the features that you actually uh, desire. An added benefit that um, this new architecture enables is the vision and realization of connected cars. This is where cars can communicate with other cars, the infrastructure, the traffic lights, the network people, uh, and also through their cell phones and basically everything. 
Okay, let's take a look at um, this evolution, but from the hardware perspective. Now, this is a very simplified set of graphics. Not every uh, detail is included, like sensors, cameras, actuators, and so on and so forth. Now, starting with the traditional uh, electronic architecture, uh, you have a distributed set of many electronic control units, or ECUs. Each is responsible for some specific functionality, such as the engine control module, the powertrain, um, and communication between these ECUs is achieved over a, actually a very reliable controller area network or CAN bus. Then the integration of ADAS and automated driving assistance systems uh, evolved the architecture by grouping functionality to specific ECUs, uh, sensors, cameras, radars, and LIDAR into uh, a domain. The communication between each domain became tightly coupled and actually relatively large. This is because the vehicle's computer can now autonomously control the driving instead of the driver. In addition, for autonomous driving, communication to the cloud is actually a prerequisite, and these automotive architectural changes laid out the basis for the next evolutionary step into software-defined vehicles. The Software-defined vehicle architecture groups ECUs, sensors, actuators, and other electrical components by their location in the vehicle, referred to as zones. The zonal architecture includes zonal gateways that act as a connectivity hub, relaying data through a high-speed Ethernet link. The connection speeds are many times higher than what's existed in vehicles in the past, and also due to real-time safety critical requirements in vehicles, the zonal gateways utilize time-sensitive network, TSN technology that actually ensures that communication is deterministic. The communication in the zonal architecture resembles that of a computer network. Another benefit to this uh, electronic architecture is that it requires substantially less cabling. Cabling is the third most costly part of a car's bill of material and the third heaviest component in its build, reaching a whopping 110 pounds of copper in some cars. So eliminating this through Ethernet is huge savings. Now, different car manufacturers have different implementations of the same components. This is not efficient, so new and open standards need to be defined and adopted. Last year, in March of 2022, the Eclipse Foundation announced the formation of the Eclipse Software Defined Vehicle Working Group. It consists of members like Mercedes-Benz, Continental, ETOS, uh, Bosch, Microsoft, IBM, and the list continues. Their focus is to create a scalable, modular, extensible, industry-ready open source license uh, software platform. Standardizing the software-defined vehicle architecture offers lots of cost savings. It will enable faster development, uh, improve quality, uh, scalability into the future. It will offer the ability of different electronic components to exchange information in a safe and secure manner. Uh, so realizing connected cars. And working together will help remediate security threats because um, they're all in conjunction working together towards uh, cybersecurity, and which is actually very important. Also, it will be quicker and easier to satisfy regulatory compliance. So getting in from the ground up for these uh, Eclipse software-defined vehicle members is very important. In fact, Qualcomm just joined in August of this year they want to contribute to the development of advanced driver assistance systems and connected services capabilities utilizing their scalable, open, and flexible Snapdragon chip. GM also recently joined and plans to contribute to creating an open, shared software-defined vehicle protocol specification and also its implementation. This will enable automotive applications and services to talk to each other and exchange information basically providing a uh, transport agnostic layer communication protocol that's built on top of existing automotive and Ethernet standards. GM is actually using their open source U protocol as their starting point. And there are other companies and members that have their own platforms and want to contribute solutions to help develop the software-defined vehicle architecture. 